Chapter 16. The Bee I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. God's judgment is surely coming, so do not ask for it to be brought sooner on to you. Glory to him, far above the partners they enjoin, the one you are all returned to. He sends angels down with inspiration at his command, to whichever servant he chooses. There is no God but me, beware of me. I created heaven and earth for a true purpose. He is above whatever they join with him. He brought man into existence when man was nothing. He created man from a drop of fluid, but man openly challenges him. God has also created livestock for you, to gain warmth from, to eat and to provide you with tranquility when you bring them home to rest in their stables and leave them to rest peacefully. They carry loads that you could not carry without great hardship. Your Lord is merciful and kind. He gives horses, mules and donkeys and things of which you do not yet know for you to use and ride. And of the paths that men choose, it is God's path alone that is straight and leads to success. Whereas the other paths are deviant and lead to ruin, God's path alone is blessed. If he wished he could guide you all to him, but he gives you freedom to choose, and whatever path of life you pick, he has promised to help you strive to what you want to do. So if you wish for heaven and God's grace, then God will help you along that way. But if you choose to follow other gods, like your own desires, then that is the path he'll allow you to take. It is he who sends down water from the sky, some of it you drink, and some sustains you and your plants and livestock. With it he grows your corn, olives, palms and vines, and all kinds of fruit you've got. There is truly a sign in this for those who reflect, and remember God's other favours too. By his command he has made the night, the day, the sun, and the moon, and the stars of use to you. And on the earth he has put a range of things of every colour, that will bring you benefit. This is surely a powerful reminder for those who will take heed of it. It is he who made the sea useful to you. You eat from its animals and pull from it jewellery to wear, and he allowed you to use your ships to go over it, so you may seek his bounty everywhere. He has made the mountain stand firm on earth to prevent the earth from shaking under you, and made rivers and paths so you may find your way and give you stars to guide you to. Can he, the creator of all of this, be compared to some other thing that cannot create? Why do you not take heed of this reminder before it is too late? If you try to count all the blessings you've been given, you could never take them all in. God knows what you conceal and what you reveal. He is most merciful and forgiving. Those that the disbelievers call on beside God create nothing. They themselves are created. Their idols are dead, inanimate things, and they have no knowledge of when they'll be resurrected. Your God is the one true God, and as for those who deny the life to come, they are the ones whose hearts refuse to admit the truth, they turn away and become arrogant. There is no doubt that God knows what they conceal and what they reveal, he does not love arrogant folk, and when they are asked what they think of the Quran, they say, these are simply ancient stories we are being told. On the day of resurrection they will bear the full burden of their own sins, and some more besides as they will carry some of the sins of those they led astray, as they had no true knowledge of any kind. How terrible will that burden be? And those who came before them also acted arrogant and schemed. But God brought down the very foundations of what they'd built. He destroyed them utterly. As was literally the case with evil Nimrod, who set himself as a rival to the Lord. He built a tower, but God made its roof collapse on them. They were completely in awe. When it comes to the day of resurrection, God will shame the disbelievers and he will say, Where are the partners that you claimed I had? And they will not be able to bring them forth in any way. And the angels will add, O oh, disbelievers, shame and misery is all you have on this terrible day. And when the angels take the disbelievers' souls, the wrongdoers plead, We did not do evil, we weren't astray. But the angels reply, Indeed you did, God knows full well what you have done. So you will enter into hell and remain in there, that is the home of the evil arrogant ones. But when the righteous are asked what they think of the Qur'an, they say God has sent good indeed. There's reward in this life for those who do good, but in the next life they will be rewarded immeasurably. Their reward is truly excellent, they will enter eternal gardens graced with flowing streams, and there they will have all they wish for, and remain there for all of eternity.
This is the way God rewards the righteous. Those who, when the angels take their souls, say to them, Peace be upon you. You will have your reward for your belief in good deeds. You will have the garden. Are the disbelievers waiting for any other end to come than the angels who will take their souls? Are they prepared to be taken to their Lord on the day he has full control? Those before them acted like them. They ignored their messengers and called their warnings a lie. So God destroyed them, but did not wrong them. They wronged themselves. They had the chance to put things right. So the evil acts they did came back around on them again. The punishment they mocked came down and surely overtook them. And those who worship other than God say, If God had wished, we'd worship no other than him. Neither would our forefathers of, so our actions must have God's blessing. He does not stop us from doing it, so he must be glad we gave him partners too. Those before them also uttered such lies, but the messengers come with the truth. Are the messengers obliged to do anything but deliver the message and to give it clearly? They say worship God alone, shun the idols, and we sent a messenger to every community. And of those who've heard the message, some chose to be guided, but some chose misguidance indeed. So travel through the earth and see the fate of those who denied the truth and ignored me. Prophet, you may be keen to guide the disbelievers, but God does not guide those who lead others astray nor will they have any other person to help them in any way. They have sworn by God with their strongest oath that God will not raise the dead to life once more, but it is God's binding promise, though most do not realise it, the resurrection will come about for sure. On that day he will make clear the things they differed about and show them the truth of what they denied, but it will be too late then for them to change their ways because they chose to be ignorant in the earthly life. When we will a thing to happen, we simply say be and the thing comes about. And those who emigrated in God's way after being wronged should know we bring good things to the devout. We shall give them good homes in this life, but the reward of the hereafter will be far greater indeed. They are the ones who are steadfast and put their trust in their Lord. They have full faith in the Almighty. Prophet, all the messengers we sent before you were simply men to whom we had given revelation to. You can ask those with knowledge of the messengers, if no knowledge of them is with you. We sent them with clear signs and scriptures, and similarly we have sent this Quran to you, so you can explain to people what was sent to them, and so they may reflect on it too. Are the ones who plan evil ever so sure that God will not make the earth swallow them instantly, or that punishment will not come upon them in some unknown way, swift and terribly? Do they think it won't come upon them while they are in the midst of their daily tasks, or that it might not come and overtake them gradually, little by little, part by part? The disbelievers scheme, but they cannot frustrate God. Your Lord is merciful and kind. Do the Meccans not observe that God has created things that cast shadows to their left and right, left in the afternoon sun, and to the right as the sun comes up at the start of the day? Indeed, each person's shadow prostrates to its Lord as everything else does, in its own way. All the things in heaven and earth submit to God, every one of the beasts and the angels too. They are free from arrogance, they fear their Lord, they do as they are commanded to. God has said, Do not proclaim to take two gods, for verily God is one. He alone is the one you should submit to and hold in awe. All things are in his possession. Everything in the heavens and earth belongs to him. Everlasting obedience is his right. Will you heed anyone other than God? God is the master and controller. It is he who has all might. Whatever good thing you possess comes from God, and you cry out to him when hardships come. Yet when he has relieved you of your hardship, some of you attribute partners to the Almighty One. Let them persist showing ingratitude for God's favours that we have given to them, and enjoy the life you have here on earth. You'll soon know how grateful you should have been. They set aside part of the sustenance we give them, for idols they choose to honour indeed. The origins of which they had no knowledge of, they made them up, but they will be questioned about their deeds. The disbelievers say, the angels are the daughters of God, and prefer themselves to have sons, and when any one of them is given news of the birth of a daughter, their faces become overcast and gloomy ones. They hide themselves away from people because of what they regard as bad news that they've received, a 
I wonder should he suffer and keep her, or bury her alive, how terrible the options they perceive. And look at the arrogance they display. They say the Almighty has daughters, but they wish for sons. They attribute to God what they do not wish to have. The image they paint of him is an insulting one. God is the mighty, God is the wise. If he took people to task for what they have done, he would not leave a single one of them on earth, but he allows them to live their life until their death comes. When their time for death is upon them, they cannot delay or change it in any way. They boast, we have sons, considered better than God's daughters. It is only lies that they say. Without doubt, they will have the fire. They will have the best of it indeed. They will suffer the worst of punishments, and of those to be abased, they will have priority. By God, we sent messengers before you, Muhammad, sent them to other communities, but Satan tricked every one of them, made them cherish and love their evil deeds. He is working with the present disbelievers too, but a painful punishment for them will come. We have sent the Quran to make things clear to people and as a guidance for the believing ones. It is God who sends down water from the sky to revive the earth when it is dead. There is a sign in this for those who listen, and a sign in your livestock that you should comprehend. From your livestock we give you drink from their bellies, pure milk sweet to drink, and yet in its belly is also waste and blood, but we bring out the milk devoid of these impure things. From the fruits of date palms and grapes, you take sweet treacle and raisins and wholesome provision too. There truly is a sign in this for people, those who put their reason to good use. And God inspired the bee, saying, Build your houses in mountains and trees and what people build. Follow the easy paths made by God and use all types of the earth's produce to seek your fill. And from their bellies comes a drink of different colours, and there is a healing for people to use. There is truly a sign in this for those who reason and consider, who reflect and are astute. It is God who created you, and in time, it is God who will cause you to die. Some of you will be reduced to an abject state in old age, so that all knowledge you had passes by. God is all-knowing and truly powerful. He has given some of you more provision than others, and those blessed with such refuse to give it to their servants, lest they become their equals. Again, God is reminding them of the foolishness apparent in what they say, as they say idols are equal to God, but would never consider their servants and themselves the same. How can they think that the creation is equal to the Creator? They deny His blessings by doing so. It is He alone who gives you spouses and children and grandchildren. He is the one in full control. It is He who provides mankind with good things. How can they lie and deny His blessings? What they worship beside God has no power to provide in the heavens and earth. Surely those idols do nothing. So do not make comparisons with God or associate any likeness or power sharer with Him. You disbelievers act as if you do not know there is none comparable to God, but now God tells you He is the knower of everything. God makes this comparison for you. Imagine a servant controlled by his master. He has no power to do as he wishes and another man who we have given plenty, and he gives much in charity, privately and publicly with it. Can these two men be considered equal? All praise belongs to God, but most disbelievers ignore this. God presents another comparison for you to consider and reflect upon it. Picture the scene of two men. One is severely disabled from birth, unable to do anything. He is in need of much care indeed. Such is the example of the idol. He cannot respond to the call when he is besieged. Can this be considered equal to a healthy man who commands others to justice and the straight path? Such is the example of God's call through the messengers. God is the first and the only and the last. All that is unseen in the heavens and earth belongs to God, such as the resurrection and other things. He has knowledge of all that will come. Judgment will happen in the blinking of an eye. The day is surely coming. God has power over all things. He brought you out from your mothers when you knew nothing at all and gave you hearing, sight and minds so that you may be thankful. Do you not see the birds made to fly through the sky? It is only God who holds them up indeed and in this and the rest of creation are truly signs for those who believe. It is God who has given you places of rest in your houses and tents and from the skins of animals you've made, items to use in your travels for warmth and furnishings and from the sun he has given you shade. 
He has made you places of shelter within the mountains, and garments to protect you from the heat, and garments to protect you in other ways. You could never count the blessings that you have received. In such ways God perfects his blessing on you, so that you may devote yourselves to him. But if they turn away from your call, prophet, know that you are only sent to deliver the warning. They know God's blessing, yet they choose to ignore them. They are ungrateful indeed, but they will have no excuse on the day we raise them and bring forth the messenger from every community. They will testify that the message was sent and that the disbelievers chose to ignore my words, so the evildoers will not have any reprieve from the punishment. They will get what they deserve. On the day the disbelievers will see the idols they worshipped and try to shift the blame of disbelief onto them, saying, Lord, these are the idols that we worshipped. It is their fault. They should be condemned. But the idols will say, No, they are liars. O Lord, we worship you. And they will offer submission to God. They will desert those who followed them too. And because of the corruption and misinformation the disbelievers spread, we shall add to their torment as they barred others from God's path, so they will suffer the punishment. On the day we raise each community's witness to testify that God's message was brought to that community, we shall bring you prophet as a witness against the Meccans, stating you gave them the message clearly. We have given you the Quran as a clear explanation between what is lawfully wrong and right, and as a guide and a mercy and good news to those who submit to God and wish to receive heaven's delights. God commands you to justice, doing good deeds, and that towards others you act generously, and he forbids you from what is shameful and oppressive, and from deeds that are blameworthy. God teaches you so that you may take heed, fulfill any pledge you make in God's name indeed, and do not break an oath after you have sworn it, for you have made God your surety. God knows everything you do. Do not use your oaths to deceive and lie. Do not be like the one who spins a thread and then frays it, making it become untied. Do not go back on the oaths you make with one group to move to a more powerful group indeed. God tests you with such a situation and on the day you will have to explain yourself to the Almighty. If God so willed, he would have made you all one people. But some he guides and some he allows to stray. You will all be questioned about your deeds when return to him on judgment day. Do not use your oaths to deceive each other, lest you should slip in your faith and then taste the punishment for establishing a deceitful practice that others may follow, taking them from God's way. Do not abandon a pledge made in God's name in exchange for some small price. God surely has a better reward waiting for you in the next life. What you have on earth will surely end, but what God will give you will endure and we shall certainly reward those who remain steadfast, those whose intentions and actions are pure. We shall reward them according to the best of their actions, be they male or female. They shall have a good life and reward in record with what they have done. God's will will always prevail. Prophet, when you recite the Quran, see God's protection from the outcast Satan, the accursed. He has no power over true believers who trust in their Lord. Seeking God's protection must be observed. Satan's power is only over those who ally themselves with him and those who obey him. They are the ones who join partners with God and they'll be judged for it when returned to their Lord again. Prophet, when we substitute one revelation for another, we know best what we abrogate. We know best what should be revealed and in what manner for servants to achieve the best of states. But when we abrogate, the disbelievers say you are fabricating all these things. But they have no knowledge of what we reveal, Muhammad. Tell him it is Gabriel that brings the revelation of the Quran down to you, step by step from your Lord the Almighty, to strengthen the believers and give good news to the devout believers who act rightly. We know well what they say of you in revelation. They say it is another man that teaches him, but the language that the person speaks is not the Arabic of this Quran. The language he uses is foreign. If people do not believe in God's revelation, God does not guide them. Punishment will come to them. Fabrications only come from those who are liars. They do not believe in God's revelation. Those who reject God after believing in him and open their hearts to disbelief will have the wrath of God fall on them and they will suffer a grievous punishment from which they will never leave. Not so the ones who are forced to say they do not believe but their hearts remain firm and true 
but disbelievers prefer the life of this world more than the one to come, for them punishment is due. God does not guide those who reject him, their hearts, hearing and sight have been closed off by him, and this has come about as God has said, he will lead each soul along the path of freedom or disbelief it has taken. If he wished he could guide you all to him, but he gives you the freedom to choose, and whatever path of life you pick, he has promised to help you strive to what you want to do. So if you wish for heaven and God's grace, then God will help you along that way. But if you choose to follow other gods, like your own desires, then that is the path he'll allow you to take. Those who reject are surely heedless. They will surely be the losers in the life to come. But to those persecuted and forced from their homes who remain steadfast, God is the most merciful and forgiving one. On the day when every soul will come pleading to save itself, it will be repaid for all it has done. Every action will be accounted for, and no one will be wronged. And God presents you with an example of a town that is secure and well at ease, with a range of sources of good things, which come to it abundantly. Then it became ungrateful for its Lord's blessings, so God brought famine and fear for what they had done, and a messenger was sent to them from their own, but they denied him, so they, by the punishment, were overcome. Believers, eat of the good things God has provided for you, and be thankful for the blessings he has given, carrion, blood and pig's meat, and any other animal not sacrificed in God's name, these are the only things forbidden. But if by hunger anyone is forced to eat the aforementioned and does not exceed their immediate need and knows that it's not being eaten from desire, then God will be merciful and forgiving towards such a deed. And do not say incorrectly, such and such is forbidden, inventing a lie for what God commands, a terrible thing. Those who invent lies about God will not prosper and those who do will find a terrible punishment waiting. And prophet, we forbade the Jews every animal with claws, and the fat of cattle and sheep too, except what is on their backs and in their intestines, and what sticks to their bones, all this we have told you. And we made this obligatory on them, because of their multitude of sins, and consequences of stiffer rules are the consequence that such actions bring. We did not wrong them, they wronged themselves, but those who did it out of ignorance and chose to repent, know your Lord is most forgiving and merciful, to those who may commence. Abraham was truly an excellent example, obedient to God and true in faith. He was not of the idolaters, but grateful to God, who guided him to the path that was straight. We gave him blessings in this world, and he will be among the righteous in the afterlife indeed. And we revealed to Muhammad, follow the creed of Abraham, the faithful, who abstained from idolatry. The Sabbath for the Jews was supposed to be Friday, but they disobeyed and argued with their prophet, and they chose Saturday instead, as when they were told to keep it on Friday, they said they did not want it. And so in that way the Sabbath was made obligatory for them, and on the day of which there is no doubt, on that day the Lord will judge between them about all the things they differed about. Prophet, call people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and teach in a beautiful way. Argue with disbelievers courteously, for God knows best who is guided and who has chosen to stray. If you believers respond to an attack, make your response proportionate, but it is best to stand fast. Prophet, be of those who are dedicated and assured. It is only through God that people become steadfast. Do not grieve over the disbelievers and do not be stressed by what they scheme, for God is with those who are aware of him, who hold him in awe and have faith and do good deeds.